<laughs> when, we, when we released Courageous, so it was our first full theatrical film release. About six weeks before the film was meant to be released, when no cinemas would uh, have us. They they weren't answering calls. They told us it wasn't viable. Door closed, door closed, door closed. So that morning I jumped on a plane to Auckland. In between, we had people praying. By the time I got off the plane in Auckland, uh, Hoyts Australia had left a voice message, had a meeting with Hoyts New Zealand, uh, Reading New Zealand and Reading uh, Australia. And by the end of that week, you know, what I asked from Hoyts, they doubled and tripled. All right, everybody, welcome back to a new episode of the podcast. On Art Vance today, we have Bill Biddle. And if you are passionate about back office strategies and being in the war room, I suppose, of, of understanding God, what's your heart for this art form and where where is it going to reach and music and film industry specifically, well, you're going to love this episode. Bill has been working in distribution and promotion of Christian music and films for over 20 years. He is currently the managing director of the Legacy Group, working in marketing, PR, and distribution, and serves as the general manager of Crossroads Distributors. Throughout his career, he has been privileged to work with artists like Bethel Music, Elevation, Casting Crowns, and Toby Mac, and working with films such as War Room, I Can Only Imagine, Life Mark, and most recently, The Chosen Season 3 launch. Bill is passionate about seeing unity across the church body. He has been married for 24 years and has three incredible children who are now adults. So guys, tune in and enjoy. I love what Bill brings out in terms of wisdom and understanding and some of the stories he shares. I know it's going to bless you on your journey. So tune in and enjoy. Welcome back, guys, to a brand new episode of the podcast. Today on the show, we have an amazing guest who works in the back office of God's blueprints for artists and the arts industry. Some of you are going to find this episode really intriguing, inspiring, interesting, and informative as well, because we're going to look behind the scenes of what God's doing in the arts industry. And I'm so privileged to have on the show today, Bill Biddle. Welcome to Art Vance. Thanks, Elliot. Great to, great to be here, mate. It's so good to have you. And I would just like to launch with, you know, tell us a bit about Bill Biddle. Who are you? Yeah, for sure. All right. So I have uh, been working in Christian uh, music distribution and promotion, um, touring for over 20 years now. Um, and that uh, evolved into working in with Christian films, uh, putting them into cinemas around Aussie and New Zealand, um, Fiji, Papua New Guinea as well. and. Um, yeah, getting to work with some of the most amazing artists and films that that have come out in our in our uh, market for uh, yeah yeah over the last twenty years. So I'm married. I have three adult kids who are twenty two, nineteen, and seventeen. Um, so my youngest just got his license, and we're entering that that empty nestish kind of uh, phase of life. So it'll, it's a uh, fun to to be on the cusp of. Yeah, that's an exciting phase. I, I'm looking forward to that phase, if, if I'm honest. I think, it, you know, I've heard from most parents that it just gets better and better as they get older. <laughs> yes. Yeah, more more independent. It's just a, a different phase of uh, you're physically exhausted when they're young and emotionally exhausted when they're older. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, well, I'll armor up for that. Um, so, hey, what can you tell us that you're working on right now, Bill? What's uh, what's latest in, in your work? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, we have just released uh, the Chosen Three, uh, Chosen Season Three, episodes one and two into cinemas. Um, so that was around Aussie and New Zealand. Um, a month before that, we had Life Mark, uh, new Kendrick Brothers film in cinemas around Australia and New Zealand as well. And as of this week, hopefully the end of this week, we'll be launching Kurong Media, which is a subscription uh, slash digital rental uh, film service. So you'll be able to go on and and stream, I can only imagine, um, The Case for Christ, The Chosen, um, yeah, all sorts of titles there across documentaries, films, kids' uh, titles, um, the whole lot. So, Man, that's yeah. super exciting. That's really exciting because I grew up in the era, Bill, where um, Kurong was the place you go to for bookshops and, and music CDs, um, and, and that's wonderful that now they're extending into that space of being kind of like a streaming service. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for so so Crossroad, the company I work for, is actually Kurong's wholesale division. And so um between us and Kurong last ten plus years, we've been licensing films. And so we have a 
a huge catalog uh, behind us at the moment and uh, lots of companies that are wanting to get on board with this. So we're madly uploading content and getting it all ready to go to uh, to launch as soon as we can. Um, but actually be next week with, with LifeMark's rental release, we'll you'll be able to, yeah, rent LifeMark digitally from, from that platform. That's amazing. And by the time you're hearing this podcast, all of this stuff will be live already. So make sure yeah. you go <laughs> straight to those links in the bio down and underneath this podcast, you'll get more details there, um, which is great. So, hey, what sparked your mission to this space of the arts, you know, music and film? What what kind of sparked within you? Because you've been in it for 20 plus years. Mm-hmm. Um, could you tell us a little bit of the origin story of, of how did Bill Biddle get in, involved in this space? Yeah, you, you probably think there's some great story behind it, but there is not. I uh, I met my wife and her family was involved with this space. So um, I, I didn't know Christian music even existed uh, back when my wife Kylie and I first met and her family had a distribution company in this space and happened that my job wasn't working out the way I wanted it to and they needed help. And so I worked started working in their Christian bookstore here in Brisbane and also Crossroad, where it started in 1998, 99. Um, and so it kind of panned out through through that. There was there was a need, and um, God gifted me with the ability to work in that space. The fact of the matter is I cannot sing, I cannot dance, I cannot play, um, but God has me here for, for a reason. So it's, uh, yeah, been good to be part of. It's amazing. And so, yeah, I kind of see that. I don't correct me if I'm wrong. You might have a better metaphor, but I see it like as a gatekeeper kind of role that you're actually standing at the gates for people who are, you know, brilliant at what they do, but just don't know how to go through gates properly and don't know how to access their audience and don't know how to, you know, go national, go international, um, and things like that, or even just administratively sort out those, you know, ideas around touring and things like that. Would you say that's, that's a metaphor I'm close to being correct on with being a gatekeeper or something like that? Um, yes and no, we work with a lot of us labels. So most of your major us labels have a Christian music division. And so we're working with them or or big us studios. The, The flip side of that is, when an Aussie artist comes to us and says, "Hey, we're we're looking to do this or that," we're we're able to speak into that space, introduce them to people, and um, you know, provide those those links that may or may not help them uh, in their careers. And you know, over over the time, there's certainly been Aussie acts that have signed to major Christian labels in the US because of uh, tours that we've put them on, or or, or different pieces uh, there that we've been involved with. So um, it's always yeah. It's good relationally to be able to point them to the right people and and just yeah steer their direction a little bit. Yeah, no, that's awesome, fantastic. We need that. I think more than ever we need that because in a lot of ways in today's age, a lot of people are just self starters and they're just trying to do everything themselves. And you know, it's that modern day kind of entrepreneur um, ideal that I, I don't need other parties i don't need you know people you know distributors i can do all this myself Mm. which i i think we're going to swing back to um you know everyone thriving at their role and and our need for one another in that sense coming to light again away from that kind of you know independence is good but but when it when you try to do everything you just burn the candle at both ends and you lack certain skill sets so that's yeah. what i love about what you and kylie do bill it's it's um it's it's such a space that's so needed and i think it's a space that we're going to be returning to a lot more with today's yeah. artists so that's so awesome hey um how do we take our area of industry and treat it as a calling so could you articulate to me a little bit um how do you see your work as a calling. And I love how practical that story was. You said, well, actually I just married into it. I, I find that like probably one of the most divine encounters ever, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we, we marry into the blessing of Jesus because, you know, he's chosen us as his bride and, and that's a beautiful picture that you've just painted there. But how would you articulate what you do as a calling? Yeah. The, it, it's interesting because probably five or six years ago, I, felt called away from, not called away, but uh, uh, some other opportunities came up. We were working with um, 
an organization that worked with the persecuted church. There were scriptures leading us in that direction. There were visions leading us in that direction. And um, I had actually officially resigned from Crossroad and had a full-time job lined up. And that door was slammed shut within weeks. Um, and so uh, came back to to what I'm doing here at, here at Crossroad. And, you know, in that, at that time we were releasing the case for christ into theaters and so this apologetics film that was across you know the four countries was went huge for us and and god's name was glorified through that and so it's interesting you know i didn't feel a calling to crossroad i felt a calling somewhere else but god's god's brought us back here in this 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 crossroad distributors legacy kind of space that um we're in now and so um yeah, every everything that we do in this space, we try and do it well and and bring glory to to God through it. And um the the beauty of of where we work is, you know, we're working with music artists that are uh singing hymns and conservative right through to um the other spectrum, Bethel and, and elevation worship, and and we get to to meet and work with those people and and try to introduce, you know, this side of the church to this, and this side of the church to this, and and let them see that there's beauty um, in in both sides. And it might not be the style they like, but you know, lyrically, it's it's just you know, God's working through it. And and there's some really amazing things to to you know to learn from each side of that that uh, that spectrum. Yeah, that's awesome. It's like breaking down those denominational barriers of disconnection to, um, yeah, just really acknowledge the expression of God uniquely in every every form that it comes. Which is, which is what worship does. It's, it's uh, you know, there's Catholic worship leaders out there like Matt Ma who have written some of the, the biggest songs that have uh, are sung in, in, you know, the other side of the church and... And but he's from a Catholic background, and but worship cuts through those barriers because it's it you know it refines us down to Jesus, not not what denomination you're from or or you know what color carpet is in your church. They they don't care about that. Yes, I love what you said there, Bill. It refines us down to Jesus. It like shakes away everything else that doesn't matter that's passing away, down mm-hmm. to what really matters. Um, which I think that's just the problem that appears in all the divisiveness that's going on is we're worrying about these other things, but if we just break it down and narrow it down to what really matters, what's eternal, what's 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 at the core of our faith, it's Jesus, right. and we see something ignited that that brings all those ends those disconnections and and you've said in your bio that you're extremely passionate about unity across the whole church body. Um, mm-hmm. And it seems we're seeing that on a media level in such a huge way right now. Like obviously, you know, having you, you're doing a bit of work with Dallas and the chosen and, and a lot of what comes across there is it's kind of like the evangelicals and the Catholics are getting along in the midst of, you know, discussing the chosen and, and what points it's hitting in their unique theology and what they're connecting over and what they disagree on, but it doesn't define the relationship. Um, Yeah, feel free to speak more into that space a little bit if you want. Yeah, well, the it was, gosh, May, May twenty sixteen. I had the privilege. We we were starting to look at working with Open Doors, and they invited us to travel to Iraq at that stage, um, and work with the persecuted church over there. And so at this stage. Uh, ISIS controlled Mosul, um, which is Nineveh, by the way, if you, you didn't know. So this is, you know, these are old, old Testament lands. Um, and so we were, had the privilege of, of traveling through, yeah, where Prophet Nahum's tomb was and, and the Nineveh plain and, and all these kind of things. Um, ISIS front lines were 10 kilometers from where we were chatting to pastors, you know, bombs, you know, the, the whole lot. And through this time, we met a, uh, a gentleman who, um he had lost everything so he had been moved out of his town because isis had come in and he lost his businesses to his muslim business partner he lost his house his cars and and everything that he had had at that stage and so 
when we met him, he was uh, uh, one of the fortunate ones. He, they, there was a group of IDPs living in town, townhouses that were uh, falling apart, but they were still, you know, actual roofs over their ha- over their heads. Um, and when we say living in, we're talking a whole family per room. So four to six people they would stack the mattresses up in the morning. They would lay them out at night, and and that's how they were living. Um, but he said to us uh, a couple of things. But one of the things that stuck to me was that. Uh, ISIS achieved in a week what the church in Iraq could not achieve in years, and that was to bring unity. Because ISIS did not care about anything else that was going on at that stage. You know, you know, don't care what church you're from, your denomination, your your worship pastor, you're this, you're that. Um, they cared, do you follow Jesus? And all of a sudden, the church was melted down to our one core thing, and 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 that was that was brought unity within the church. And so, you know, I, I see what we do, not as, not as bringing unity, but we, we distribute products that all aspects of the church can access. And, and I don't want them to be held back for one part of the church or, or another. And, and so how do we, how do we faithfully steward what's being put in our hands to, to reach the whole church and impact the whole church? And if someone doesn't want part of it, that's fine. But you know, we're going to to make them available to to everyone because I think that there's, you know, hopefully the products we're working with help people in their in their walk with Jesus and um, yeah, help them through those stages. Hey there, I hope you're enjoying the episode. We're going to get back to it just in a moment. I just want to tell you about our Patreon. Patreon is an opportunity for you to have access to more opportunities and content only for Patreon members. You're not only helping the podcast stay sustainable and go to another level of quality, but you're also going to have access to more content and opportunities. So head over to that using the link in the description below. Let's get back to the interview. And I think Christian media in and of itself has just gone to a, a, an astro- astronomical level of improvement, um, mm. which I think is is really promising for the artists of our day that feel called to tell stories and take it to media. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There, there's certainly a raising of the bar. Um, and, you, you know, there's, there's other films that don't quite meet our expectations, but the the story behind it is is a, a, a God story, and you know we're we're going to promote those films because we know it will touch someone um, in where, where they're at at that time. And yeah, if it's got a message that leads people to Jesus, that then we'll probably be part of it, unless it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Enterprising art, which, you know, being an artist myself over the years of, you know, songwriter, worship leader, um, you know, doing more screenwriting these days and um, passionate about all those spaces. What I find often with artists is they say, I just don't know how to make this into a living. I just, I, you know, and sometimes they can't because it's just not quite there in terms of its ability to deliver to audience or it's not clear enough on who your audience is and things like that. But what would be some of your wisdom or encouragement to people who are looking at saying, look, I, I'm doing my art and it feels like a calling, but I feel like I'm only giving my leftovers to it because I've got to do my nine to five job. Um, and there are cases where they should just keep going with their nine to five job and God will shift something when it's time. But what about those who, you know, God's told them, I want you to take a leap of faith. I want you to, you know, turn your art into enterprise, make it a business, become entrepreneurial in your art. What would be a word of wisdom that you could give someone who might be in that space? Yep, yeah, that's that's really tough. Um, tough because there's there's no one answer to to that. You see, some artists uh, release their first EP, first album, whatever, and all of a sudden it's getting played around the world. And other artists who have been toiling for twenty years and not having that success um but we see that in the church as well we that's why we have small churches and we have big churches and neither one is wrong and it's just being comfortable with with what your position is in in that space um but for artists for for me it's uh really knowing why you're doing what you're doing and and refining that and because there's going to be really tough times 
you know, there's been tough times here at Crossroad and I'm like, all right, what, why are we doing this? What, what's our purpose? Um, and so refining that and knowing that I want to lead people into the presence of God, that supersedes when you don't feel like you're getting paid enough or you have only slept four hours the night before because of other circumstances or, or some other issues that are, are trying to ping away at you. My purpose is to do this. And so I'm going to do, do this with all my heart. And yeah, it, it builds from there. And so along with that is, um, did you ever see War Room, the, the movie that came through? You know, part of that is they, they have this, this, um, wall of remembrance and it's the, the prayers that Jesus has answered uh, along the way. And so I think, um, I know for us here at Crossroad, we often remember uh, different parts of our story that that God has intervened in. Um, uh, when, we, when we released Courageous, so it was our first full theatrical film release, uh, we got to a point about six weeks before the film was meant to be released where no cinemas would uh, have us. They, they weren't answering calls. They told us it wasn't viable. Just door closed, door closed, door closed. Um, had a call with Sony one morning and they were they were furious with us. You know, it wasn't it wasn't working out that the way that we had all hoped. Um and so that morning I jumped on a plane to um Auckland and in between we had people praying, just speaking into to what was going on. By the time I got off the plane in Auckland, uh Hoyts Australia had left a voice message for me. I had a meeting with Hoyts New Zealand, uh Reading New Zealand and Reading uh, Australia. And by the end of that week, it was, um, you know, what I asked from Hoyts, they doubled and tripled uh, that. And so, you know, just just those remembrance things of, all right, I'm called to this. And you know what? I've seen God do this for me before. I've seen God do this for me. And and knowing those ways through. And for me, that's what sustains through those hard times, um, the times you you might feel like you're hitting your head against the wall a little bit. Um the other side of it all is, you know, we work in a really small industry and so relationships are, are, are key and not just building new relationships, but actually having relationships with people that um, where you honor them and their time and, and you know, um, yeah, you, if you <laughs> if you want to turn up and, and do something poorly, that is is how you're building that relationship, unfortunately, and, and that will, you know, that will filter out and then that's that's a hard, lot of hard work to to rebuild sometimes and so um for me it's you know my my work is built on relationship where someone will have a, a new film and they will uh speak to other people we've worked with and if we've done a good job with them then then they will you know obviously endorse us and 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 that will build further and further and so i think that's the same with with new artists you get those networks around you and it keeps building with those relationships that you build and opportunities will come up to, to, to move into a space that you didn't see before. And, um, yeah, shift that way. I love that bill. Like so, so many times I've spoken to people like yourself, but working in different spheres and everyone is saying the same thing. Like it's when you hit success, it's never about the, the, the credit. It's never about the, um, the achievement being emphasized. What's getting emphasized is relationships. It, you know, if I didn't have relationship with that person, there's no way we could have pulled it off. If I didn't have relationship with God, I would have, I would have resigned on the plane and, you know, given into that pressure cooker moment, like you were just talking about. Um, and you got off the plane and you had people praying and the breakthrough happened while you were while you were seated, seated on a plane, you were, you were sitting. I was offline. It was, it was God's yeah. timing beautifully. <laughs> Isn't that so God though? He's like, okay, I need you out of the way. I need you to rest um, and let me work for you. And, and you see it, you know, all through the Old Testament, they're, they're telling the stories of, of what God's done for them because we need to remember. Um, a part of that, you know, I feel like that's why, Jesus told us to take communion so often, you know, where it's, it's telling the story of, of that salvation moment, you know, the, the Jesus dying on the cross for us. And it just points us back to those, those things that are so, um, that the cornerstone of, of what we believe. So guys, I really hope you're enjoying season two of art Vance. 
I've had so much enjoyment creating it. Can I ask you a favor to go over to Apple Podcasts and write a five-star review for us? It will help us reach more people. As well, could you make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Elliot Bonza, as well as subscribe to the podcast on Apple. I really appreciate it. Listen, you know, as you're talking, Bill, it just feels like, you know, the father is just speaking into this space of of creating a place, creating space for artists to flourish, um, but also creating that space for where relationship gets honored again. Because the last few years we've had to be locked down. We've had to be, you know, not meeting together all the time. And, and for a lot of people, they've had to learn new skill sets. And sometimes one of the skill sets that goes out the window is, is the value of relationship because survival mode does that to us. It kind of goes, well, you know, I can't go and meet that person. I've got to go it alone. Um, but I just feel like the father wants to release something over people listening to the episode right now uh, to build a fresh value for relationship, to to make room, to create space for those conversations to happen that need to happen and actually having faith that God will do miracles in conversations over coffee more than if we are just, you know, burning ourselves out trying to do everything in our own strength. Would you pray for artists for the lord to do a chiropractic adjustment in our thinking around valuing relationship not for what we can get out of it and you know oh that person's my daughter favor not thinking like that but that that sense of no that person has value and i think i can give value to them as well um Mm -hmm. and whatever god does with that is up to god but would you just pray for us and just speak whatever you feel in terms of wisdom or prophetically um i think that'd be super valuable for the listeners right now yeah awesome well father we we thank you for this time and uh we thank you for what you're doing in the space of um creativity in worship in films and and the 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 pathways that you are, are setting forth the, the the footsteps that you're setting forth lord for us to follow and to uh, be led down lord father we pray for those in this space, we ask that you would um, firstly fill them with uh, your passion for what they're doing, so that they they know without a doubt that um, that you are in this space, that you are leading them through uh, these times. But Lord, also help us to um, create space and opportunity for relationship, Lord, relationship with with everyone we come across, uh, treat them with. Uh, honor and and respect father so that um not that we may be rewarded with with some opportunity lord but but that you would be glorified in what we're doing and uh in turn you know lead us into the direction that you would have us have us go father well, we pray for those uh supernatural uh, relationships those those meetings the those interventions that that happen um and that open doors up that we would have never uh, seen with our own eyes, and may they uh, open up wider and wider, Lord. May there be a network in this country of of creators that um, build each other up, can speak truth honestly about the creative process, and and Lord, just uh, yeah, see opportunities with your eyes, see relationships with your eyes, and um, see the beauty of what you're doing with your eyes, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So good. Thank you, Bill. Um, you know, relationships is, is kind of the, it's the goal, the, the holy grail of, of the kingdom in the sense of when everything else fades, when success happens, when failures happen at the end of the day, who is, who is in my life? Who has God graced me to walk with in life? Um, so guys, I hope you're really encouraged by that today. Uh, Bill, you've just been just pouring out so much wisdom and encouragement. Thank you so much for coming on to Art Vance. No worries, man. Great to be here. It's uh, exciting to see what you're doing. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, guys, stay tuned for the next episode when it comes out. And if you want to find out more about Crossroads and what Bill does, you can go down to uh, his email address is in this bio, but you can also find their website there as well. And uh, yeah, let's get behind people like Bill and what they're doing to create a space and a link between the artist and their audience. It's such a huge space that come to, sometimes gets not enough credit and not enough, um, not enough attention. So I'm really excited about what these 
these guys have been doing for decades and what God is about to do through them in the years to come. So guys, we'll see you next time on Art Bands. This episode of Art Bands has been sponsored by Audio Sugar. Thanks again for providing amazing stock music to help grow the sound of this podcast. See you next time.